Hey, what's up, Crypto Army? I'm Travis, your Crypto Newbie, bringing you my experiences. You have to learn things the hard way. Just a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor, and none of my contacts will give financial advice. Now, just a quick update on Reflex Finance. You're going to want to stick around to the end of this video because there's a really, really important portion that I'm going to cover later in this video. But first, let's discuss the launch pad and the swap. So the launch pad goes live on 9 April. On the 6th, 7th, and 8th is when it's going to be over on mainnet for mainnet testing. Now, if you've been following crypto for a while, you know there's a testnet and there's a mainnet. Right now, the launch pad is being tested on the testnet. How things operate on a testnet versus a mainnet is often different. So they have to at least test it on the mainnet just to make sure that there's no unforeseen glitches or issues that pop up. So that's what the 6th to the 8th is going to be. Now on the 9th, it's going to go live and we've already seen at least one project has been gold tier verified and they've got plenty of other projects. I think they indicated up to 30 projects have reached out to them to launch on their launch pad, which is awesome. Now they're going to have two tiers. They're going to have the gold tier and the silver tier. The gold tier is going to go through a lot more verification steps and processes. Not a lot more detail as far as how the two tiers compare and whether there's a tier that's not gold or silver. It's not entirely clear if everything that isn't gold is silver. I think there's going to be essentially three tiers is kind of what it sounds like is you're going to have your gold tier, which is the most exhaustive and the likelihood of having a rug pull or a scam on that tier is probably pretty unlikely. Now, nobody can guarantee that a project is successful. And I've said this repeatedly, nobody can ever guarantee that a project is successful. They can, however, mitigate the potential for a rug pull or a scam to the point where it's really not likely to be a rug pull or a scam, but we've seen multiple launches that have problems because of bots or because of bad actors out there or DDoS attacks. There's a whole bunch of things that can happen at a launch that can cause a project to fail at launch. That's possible regardless what tier you're talking about. Now, most of the time when it's something like that, the project does a relaunch. They fix whatever issue that caused the problem, whether it's you know the bots or whatever the problem was, they generally fix that and relaunch. That's not a rug pull or a scam. That was the project getting attacked or something unforeseen happening. Again, hackers are constantly looking for new ways to attack contracts. So you can't necessarily fault the project for bad actors, especially when they went through an audit and the audit didn't find anything. Now in the case of gold tier, Interfi is going to be the option for those projects, not to say that they can't have another audit done or that they're not going to do other audits in the future. Like most companies go to Certic to do an audit by Certic down the road, just because Certic is kind of pricey for what you get. You get a really, really extensive audit, but it's a little expensive. <laughs> it's not a cheap investment. Now, one new update as far as the launch pad is Ray said that there's basically three phases. So we can expect the three phase approach for the launch pad. What we're seeing right now is basically the first phase. Not a lot of detail on the second and third phase, but he did provide a little bit of amplifying information about the second phase, just that it's gonna be more secure and it's gonna provide a way to basically ensure that there's not gonna be any problems with reimbursing people that lose money if there is a gold tier that does do a rug pull or a scam. Now, what would I like to hear a little bit more about as far as this launch pad? I'd like to know a little bit more about what they're going to do if there is a rug pull or a scam on their launch pad. Now, not everybody goes through the gold tier process, but let's say there's a rug pull or a scam on the gold tier or the silver tier. What does that translate to as far as action by them? Are they releasing the information to Interpol? Are they releasing it to local authorities, wherever those people are? Are they putting the information out there on the internet for everybody to have? So we know exactly who did the rug pull. I'd like to know a little bit more about what their process is and what the projects are agreeing to when they sign with Reflex Launchpad as far as that process. What is it that Reflex Finance is gonna do exactly if somebody does a rug pull or a scam? And if a project fails at launch, what have the projects agreed to do? Anything? Are they Have they agreed to do a relaunch? Or what is it that they've got as far as the contract to ensure that these projects follow through and actually launch a project? Now, I've participated in multiple projects that have failed at launch. Again, most of the legitimate ones relaunch. And the relaunch doesn't always go well because they've already failed once. So a lot of times, investors pull out of it. 
but they try to pull the project back, especially if they have good ambitious goals for that project. If they're trying to make a difference in the space, again, projects that get attacked on launch for a reason. They're seen as a competitor to somebody else. A lot of times those attacks come from other projects. I'm still pretty sure that some of them, especially in the case of a DDoS attack, are illegal. So if a project is doing that, then they can be held legally responsible if they're caught. But again, it's kind of hard to catch some of those people. Now, as far as the Reflex Launchpad, any project can launch on the Reflex Launchpad. So that's where I think the third tier is. If they're not silver, if they're not gold, then they're basically nothing and they're just launching on the launch pad. I would equate those projects to being the equivalent to a pink sale launch, which makes sense. You really do want to encourage every project to launch on Reflex Finance. You as an investor just need to understand that if they didn't do the KYC and they didn't do the audit and they didn't do all those things, you're effectively saying that it's the equivalent to a pink sale launch, potentially. Now, it could still be a good project, but you definitely want to make sure you do your own research because Reflex Finance isn't doing that research. They're not going to guarantee that that project's not going to have a problem. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. I would also like Reflex Finance to actually post this information so that we can take a look at it once we get a little closer to the actual launches starting to happen. Because it would be good to understand exactly what is entailed with a gold or silver or the third category of, of neither, if that's the case. Now the swap or the DEX is also gonna go live on the night. That's when they're gonna inject all the liquidity so that that goes up and running. Now, as far as the launch pad and the swap and how things integrate, the project puts $25,000 paired. So 25,000 BNB and 25,000 of their token into the DEX. That'll allow for trading to begin on their DEX. Now they can also launch on pancake swap because they're two different things. They're completely different swaps. And it's probably in their best interest to do both because there's a lot of people that are used to using pancake swap. You want to make sure that those people can still buy the project while Reflex builds up their swap. And it shouldn't take long for Reflex to build up their swap because they're charging less fees than pancake swap. And less fees means that when you spend your money, you get more tokens. So I can see that I'll be definitely testing out Reflex in the future. Now, on the 9th, you'll be able to buy Reflex and any other project that's launching on their swap on that day. You're not necessarily gonna be able to buy SafeMoon or Evergrow or any other project until they officially list with Reflex. It's a completely different swap from PancakeSwap. So just keep that in mind is the projects you can get on PancakeSwap, you're not necessarily gonna be able to get them over on Reflex until they've actually injected the liquidity to start the trading process. Now, as far as farming, farming is not gonna start until probably a week or two after the launch pad and the DEX launch. And basically what Ray said is that they're trying to make it so that they can put any token pair in their farming platform. It doesn't necessarily require an inject for the project in order to list them. Now that doesn't mean they're just gonna list any random project. They're gonna go reach out to the project to make sure that they wanna be listed on their farming platform and then list them. But it's kind of cool that you don't have to have an inject in order to start that process. And again, Ray emphasized he's still working on a video. So the video will come out a little closer to when the farming actually goes live. And it's going to cover all the different questions and all the different situations that people have been asking him about. All right. So now for the big news. The V2 migration goes live today for April at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. And the big portion of this is if you try to buy, sell, or transfer after 2 p.m., there's a 99% fee affixed. Now this might sound familiar from SafeMoon. It's very similar to that. Now, I hate the idea of a 99% fee. I think that there's people that are probably gonna lose some money as part of this process because they're just not gonna be aware of it. They don't watch their investments that closely and they're probably gonna try to do this and lose all their tokens. But there really isn't another way to do it. Now, when you're buying and selling on PancakeSwap, a 99% fee should make it so that you can't actually execute that transaction. That's why they set it up at 99%. Now it's virtually impossible to do a buy or a sell with a 99% fee. It's gonna error out. You're not gonna get the number of tokens that you're expecting to get or the amount of BNB or the amount of BSC. Whatever you're trying to trade for, you're not gonna get it. If I was a betting person, I would say that if you're on PooCoin, there's a possibility that your transaction could go through with a 99% fee. 
But again, I, I don't use Poo Coin, so that's just my guessing on how that could happen. And the people that indicated they lost all their tokens on the Safe Moon process, I didn't ask them for clarification on what swap they used or what decks they used. My guess was that they were using Poo Coin just because that's the only place I could see that working, or potentially the exchanges. Now, because BitMart is the only exchange that we've got, we should have less issues. And that's part of the benefit of them doing this migration this early in the process is we don't have a lot of exchanges and our holders spread right around six, 7,000 people. It's a lot less than it could be in a year with 100,000 or 200,000 different holders. There's a lot more potential for the issues that SafeMoon had doing it later. So I'm actually pretty happy that they did this process this early. There's no way for them to prevent any of this. They have to set it up there in order to avoid the arbitrage issues that SafeMoon was having. And it was essentially draining the liquidity. Now the liquidity for version one is locked for another 10 months. I think they locked it for a year when they launched. They can't pull it out. So in about 10 months when the liquidity becomes unlocked, that's when they're gonna pull the liquidity out of the V1 contract and move it over. But they are gonna inject that liquidity for version two here in a couple hours. Now you should be able to buy and sell version two starting right around 2 p.m. today, Central Standard Time. Now for the contract, this is a new contract. If you go over to the downloads here, Reflex version two audit. The contract address is inside that audit. Don't get the contract address from anywhere else. This is the most reliable way to get that contract address. And you're gonna wanna add this to your wallet. So when you go through the migration process, you'll see your new tokens in the version two. So make sure you add this to your wallet, that way you can see it. And this is what you're gonna to wanna to buy and sell moving forward. So make sure you don't select version one when you're trying to do buys and sells. Make sure you're always selecting version two. Now around 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, there's gonna be a video that explains this entire process. And you're gonna to go to the website to do this process. And how the process has been described is basically you go to the website, you link your wallet, you send your tokens, you receive the new tokens. You're gonna to have to pay a little bit of a gas fee and you gotta make sure that you use whole numbers. So just as an example, if you have 1 trillion point 152, you can only do this process to the 1 trillion, not to the point 152. So just make sure it's a whole number. And this process, they've got about two weeks allocated to complete. Now, is it better to wait two weeks or do this right away? Well, if you're version one and the buy, sell and transfer fee is 99%, how much trading do you think is likely to happen? Probably not a lot. And the trading that does happen is gonna have a brutal outcome with 99% fee. So you're gonna to wanna to move over to version two in order to take advantage of the buying and selling and getting those rewards. Rewards are effectively gonna end for version one as soon as they go live. You're not gonna to wanna to stay on version one any longer than you have to. It's in your best interest to move over as quickly as possible. Now, I always recommend when you're going through these processes that you take screen captures. Record how many tokens you've got when you start this process. That way, if there's any kind of a problem, it's much easier to work with the team. Now, they can always look at your address and see what's on the blockchain, but at least it's a little bit easier because you've got the information for them in a screen capture as well. That's my approach. I always take a screen capture. What does the system say that I've currently got? And then I go through the process to make sure that the output matches what the input was. Now, a couple other mechanisms they're gonna adjust slightly. They're gonna slightly adjust that anti-whale mechanism. It's gonna be lowered to 200 billion for the cells. Now, why is it like that? A lot of times people try to exploit lower liquidity by selling large amounts of tokens, which drains the liquidity. And I guess their hope is, is that they can kill a contract during that period where they haven't built up the liquidity yet. That's why they're gonna adjust it. They've also got some mechanisms to prevent multiple iterations of 200 billion sales. So maybe you've got a trillion or two trillion tokens and you're trying to sell 200 billion, 200 billion, 200 billion, 200 billion, just to drain the liquidity. Their contract is also set up to prevent that issue. Now, this is expected to go for about two weeks once the liquidity has been built up and it's less of an issue, and then they'll turn it back to the previous settings. Now, if you're on BitMart, BitMart is gonna do this entire process for you starting around Tuesday. So you shouldn't have to really do much of anything. BitMart's gonna do the entire process. Reflex is gonna give them the inject that they need in order to begin that process. And then they're gonna move everybody over to version two. So for questions about the BitMart migration, 
reach out to BitMart and clarify with them. As always, if you have problems or something doesn't work the way that it's supposed to, you can always reach out to the team. But if you're on an exchange, it's always better to reach out to the exchange because they're the ones that ultimately have to fix it. Now, what about the charts? So the charts are gonna be a little chaotic for a couple days. So expect that they're gonna bounce around a little bit as people move in and out of Reflex and do their migration process. And Reflex has already said there's scam groups set up out there, there's scam contracts out there saying that's already live. So there's a whole bunch of scammers that are already trying to steal your money. So make sure you only go to legitimate sources for information about this migration. That's pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you find the content helpful. Let me know in the comments, what are you most excited about for Reflex Finance moving forward? Now just to reiterate, 2 p.m., the information is gonna be released about how to do this migration. There should be a video, should walk you through the entire process, and it should be very easy to do. At this point, I don't recommend buy, sell, or transfer until after you've done the migration, just to alleviate any potential issues. Again, not financial advice, that's just the approach I'm gonna take. I'm gonna do the migration, and then I'm gonna worry about buy, sells, and transfers. Until next time, stay strong with those diamond hands.